Good morning, everybody. I'd like to call this uh, virtual public hearing to order. Uh, I want to thank everybody that is on uh, so far virtually with us uh, for joining us uh, this morning. This is the uh, first virtual public hearing that we've done uh, on the House side. So I wanted to take a, a moment to thank uh, the House Judiciary staff who, who worked uh, all last week and, and through the weekend to make sure that that uh, that we could get everybody here and have an opportunity for the public to uh, to participate in our um, in our process, which I think is a very good thing. So let me just state a few housekeeping items and then we'll get started. Uh, and I hope that everybody will be patient while we work through any kinks that, that happen today. Um, the House rules of conduct and decorum are in full effect during these proceedings. Uh, this is a professional and official hearing of the House Committee on the Judiciary and will be conducted as such. The members and individuals uh, may not speak out of turn uh, without recognition by the chair. Uh, please hold any displays of uh, support or opposition in any manner. This is a courtesy to everybody else on the call to give equal opportunity to be heard. Uh, those speaking uh, may not want to exit the virtual hearing. Uh, in the event there are questions uh, at the end, we may entertain some questions at the end if we have time. Uh, personal remarks, uh, I would ask that everybody ref refrain from personal remarks or attacks of any individual. Uh, those will those are outside of the rules of decorum and we will uh, mute you accordingly. Uh, we are uh, streaming live to millions around the world this morning. So uh, anything that you say uh, may be uh, used against you in the court of social media. And uh, when I call your name, I'll announce you and pronounce your name as best as I can, followed by the individual that is uh, on deck, as they say in baseball, so you can be queued up and ready to go. Um, I ask that uh, everybody be ready. We'll try to run it as tight as possible. Every speaker is going to be uh, given two minutes to speak. At the end of the two minutes, uh, we will uh, move on to the next speaker. With that, we will go ahead and get started. This morning, I'm going to try to rotate those in favor and those opposed, um, but we will start with Hannah King. Hannah King. Miss King, are you on the phone or on the uh, call? Maybe I have to unmute you. I apologize if you're speaking. Okay. I don't see Ms. King with us yet this morning. Let's see. On deck is Mr. Unger. I just see Senator Unger waiting for Joseph. We'll keep going. Mr. Bostic, are you on this morning? All right. I'm looking for him here. Eric Engel. All right, uh, Mr. Lillard, David Lillard, we're going to start with you this morning. I'm going to actually, I need to admit all these. Mr. Lillard, I apologize about the uh, 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 the 
um, delay. We're getting everybody in here. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. Let me uh, let me go back since we're just getting a, just getting the hang of this here. Did everybody hear my opening remarks or not? Give me a thumbs. Okay, let me start over. We've admitted uh, everybody that was in the waiting room. This is a uh, most of you've probably uh, been a part of our public hearings. Welcome to the public hearing, our first virtual public hearing. I actually had a uh, uh, a first run at this, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, on this one. We're streaming live here in the uh, House Government Organizations Room. We appreciate everybody joining us this morning to talk about uh, our rules bundle that's coming up later this week on House Bill 2389. I would ask that most of you have probably done this before, but we usually do it in the chamber. Uh, we're going to afford everybody two minutes to speak, and we would ask that you try to keep those comments to two minutes. At the end of your two minutes, we will uh, we will mute you. Uh, the House rules of decorum and uh, obviously of, of respect uh, apply here. We would ask that everybody uh, respect those and, and be respectful of the members uh, and of this House as though we were sitting in the chamber. We are doing our very best to accommodate uh, you this morning, but we also feel like it's important to hear your voices and are glad that you've taken the time on a Monday morning to be with us. So we're going to do the best we can to make this work. Um, and what I'll do is, as normal protocol, I will announce the first speaker, followed by uh, the, the, the individual that is uh, on deck, as they say, or next. So the, 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 the individual that is next to speak, please be uh, ready. And what I will do is um, I will see if we can be behaved uh, and everybody can stay muted until they're called on. And if I need to unmute you, I will do that. Um, but we would ask again that... Uh, that everybody stay on mute while the speaker is speaking. Uh, I see David Lillard here. I have you first on my list, Mr. Lillard. The clock will start when you begin speaking. Welcome uh, to the virtual committee on uh, the House Judiciary uh, virtual meeting this morning. Please proceed. How do I unmute them, guys? What? Can you unmute yourself, Mr. Little, or do I need to? Okay. Mark, you need to do it over there, probably. Whoever the, whoever the host is. Stand by. Uh, please be patient with us here for a few minutes. We're working to get the kinks out here. Mr. Liller, would you please, everybody, please get on mute. Mr. Liller, see if you can unmute yourself now. How's that? Bingo. All right. Way to go, folks. We're all working through this together. Thank you for having us all here today. My name is David Lillard. I live in Jefferson County. I speak today in opposition to this bill on behalf of my internal organs, which are already subjected to a barrage of toxins in my drinking water. These standards have been in place a long time, and as far as we know, companies are complying with them. They are not too burdensome. There's been no flight of businesses from West Virginia as a result of them, and there's no reason to weaken them. I'm sure we'll hear a bunch of reasons why we should allow more chemicals in our water, and I expect one of them will be jobs, and for once, I don't disagree. 
But I'm not talking about jobs in polluting industry. I'm talking about the jobs we don't have, the jobs we won't have because 21st century businesses don't want to move here, and about the jobs that won't materialize in tourism despite all the investment the state is making. I mean, who would want to come here? Americans are planning their summer vacations eager to get away after this pandemic. I imagine right now a mother is surfing the web, and when her daughter asks, Mama, what you doing? I'm looking for a place to go vacation, sweetie. But I thought we were going to go to West Virginia and visit that new national park, the girl cries. Oh, Mama says, we just don't feel safe going to West Virginia. The legislature there just allowed more toxins in the water, more cancer-causing agents, more endocrine disruptors. We're looking at other states. And that's where this is going. You can do this, and we're rewriting our brand. West Virginia, we do the minimum. When it comes to health, we do the minimum. This bill just hastens our state's race to the bottom, and the legislature wants to drive the bus right off the cliff. I urge you to defeat this measure and this unwise giveaway to corporate polluters. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lillard. I appreciate uh, you being with us this morning. Hannah King is next, followed by Joseph Unger. Go ahead when you're ready, Ms. King. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. My name is Hannah King, and I'm from Charleston, West Virginia. I'm a lobbyist for West Virginia Environmental Council, and I'm here on behalf of my organization and several of our member groups to speak in opposition of HB 2389. Clean water is a public good. We all have an inherent right to clean water. The purpose of HB 2389 is to authorize the DEP to impose less stringent requirements on 13 human health criteria values, which were put in place to protect the safety of our drinking water and to keep our rivers and streams safe for fishing. Weakening these standards for possible carcinogens and toxins would increase the risk of public health and potentially endanger the well-being of all West Virginians. With our state having the third highest cancer death rate in the country, we cannot afford to further weaken our water quality standards. Some of the pollutants that will become less stringent have very concerning health impacts, which can affect organ development, the central nervous system, the respiratory system, and the reproductive system. Some can cause damage to the liver, kidneys, and the immune system. One large reason to oppose any weakening of our water quality standards is the well-being of our children. According to the World Health Organization, children are most vulnerable to harmful contaminants because their bodies are still growing and toxic chemicals cause more, harming, more harm to developing organs and tissues. These exposures can have serious effects on their health that may continue for a lifetime. I urge you to oppose House Bill 2389, and I urge the West Virginia DEP to adopt all EPA-recommended criteria that would be more protective of human health. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. King. Thank you for being with us this morning. I uh, will go to Joseph Unger. Mr. Unger? Good morning. Uh, my name is Joseph Unger, and I have been asked by the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce to indicate its support for House Bill 2389 and the efforts of the DEP to work to establish scientifically defensible standards for human health criteria. States are encouraged by the US EPA to develop state standards which best represent the uniqueness of each state. West Virginia began this process in 2019 with a strong foundation in human health protection, including the application of category A drinking water quality requirements to all the state's waters and imposing a risk factor of one in one million related to cancer cases, as much as 10 times more stringent than neighboring states. It is the Chamber's hope that the West Virginia DEP considers these factors and current science when adopting water quality standards. A healthy environment and healthy economy with good jobs for West Virginians are not mutually exclusive. Our state should work towards such a balance. We urge the West Virginia legislature to take this first step in doing what's right for West Virginia by adopting House Bill 2389. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Unger. Uh, Eric Engel is next, followed by Jason Bostic. Mr. Engel. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Eric Engel, and I am here on behalf of the West Virginia Rivers Coalition. I'm on the board of directors. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, thank you. Um, 
when we started this process, the EPA recommended 94 water quality standards updates. Uh, then the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection focused on 56. Uh, over the course of the process, we got down to 24, which is where we're at right now. And 13 of these remaining 24 would lead to less stringent standards uh, and less safe uh, water for West Virginians. So this process has continued on to 2021 um, and been delayed a little bit longer than was really necessary. And, and what uh, West Virginia DEP needed to do, what the state legislature needs to do, is adopt as many of those 94 standards that the EPA recommended, including standards that have not been updated since the 1980s, as possible. Uh, we need clean, potable water for all West Virginians. It is a human right. Uh, there was testimony when this was discussed last time in the legislature stating that West Virginians could handle more toxins because more of us are overweight and we don't eat uh, the fish in our streams and rivers, which we're not really able in many cases to eat fish in streams and rivers because of the warnings, the health warnings against doing so. So it's important for us to focus on the fact that Healthcare costs, public safety costs, environmental costs are not just uh, what economic orthodoxy has come to refer to as externalities. These are costs that we all must bear. We all must live here. We all must have access to clean, safe water. And it's incredibly important that you do not vote in favor of this bill and that standards for water quality in West Virginia are updated Thank in you. such a way that they Thank are not you. reduced. Thank you. Thank you for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Mr. Bostic, Jason Bostic, followed by Gail Colehurst. Colehurst. Mr. Bostic. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, Jason Bostic with the West Virginia Coal Association. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I will, Mr. Chairman, be very brief. I want to voice the coal industry's full support for the rulemaking proposal contained in House Bill 2389 and urge the legislature to adopt the bill as quickly as possible. I think it's also appropriate to voice the coal industry support for the process that led to this rulemaking. The working group approach envisioned by the legislature is entirely appropriate when dealing with multiple parameters. I think it's also critical that West Virginia consider the appropriateness of any proposal from the Federal Environmental Protection Agency before adopting federal standards wholesale as some would advocate. The coal industry in this legislature has spent years addressing water quality standards proposed by EPA that were adopted without question by the state, only to discover years later that these standards did not reflect the best science for West Virginia's waters and its industry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bostic. Uh, Gail Colehorst, followed by Robin Blakeman. Ms. Colehorst? Gail Colehorst, are we muted or are we just not here? <laughs> I have to ask. Okay, let's let's uh, skip back. Uh, if she, if she arrives, we'll let her have her two minutes. Uh, Miss Blakeman, followed by uh, Angie Rosser, Robin Blakeman. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> oh, Gail. Oh, go ahead. Pr please proceed. Excuse me. It's all yours. Okay. Take it Thank away. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Gail Colehorst from Harpers Ferry. I'm the current president of the Eastern Panhandle Group of the West Virginia Sierra Club. I'm here today to speak in opposition to H.R. 2389, which makes changes to the critical portion of West Virginia's water quality standards called the human health criteria. As they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and public health should be the number one priority of our state. Not only is the health of our citizens vitally important, but since many of our people don't have ad adequate health care, the economics of treating disease versus preventing it are astronomical. Of the 94 regulated chemicals uh, recommended for study and updating, West Virginia chose to look at 24 of those and weaken the standards of 13. West Virginia has the third highest cancer rate in the county and we can't really afford to have additional toxins in our water. Scientists agree that additional exposure to toxins 
poses increased risk to our health. Here in the Eastern Panhandle, we're threatened with the start of the rock wool plant sitting on top of karst geology and our huge aquifer, which provides drinking water to almost all of Jefferson County, where 80% of the residents have wells. Please vote against this dangerous bill. West Virginia's natural beauty and resources are its greatest asset. Let's not contaminate our water. Who's going to invest in business here if we can't even drink the water? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Colhorse. Robin Blakeman, Robin Blakeman, followed by Angie Rosser. Blakeman? Hi, good morning. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I represent the Ohio Valley Environmental Coalition, West Virginia Interfaith Power and Light, and I am uh, the vice chair of the Orsenko Watershed Organizations Advisory Committee. Most of my um, past decade career life has been spent working for clean water in the state. But before that, um, I need to, to also give the credential that I am an eighth generation West Virginia resident. Um, as such, it pains me to say that this bill, House Bill 2389, the Water Quality Standards Rule, which weakens so many standards, is actually making me think seriously about moving out of this state. And I say that with a lump in my throat, because that's not what I want to do. I want to see the standards improve. Um, in 2015, the EPA proposed 94 updates to pollutant standards. We should be adopting all 94 of those updates for the health and welfare of our citizens in this state and to bring in good, clean jobs. At least we should go with the 56 that were proposed by our DP, DEP at the start of this past year. This bill has been weakened by the Manufacturers Association and um, industrial lobbyists. And it is to the point where I am really concerned about the economic and environmental justice issue of water access for our citizens. Above all else, we need to maintain a fish consumption standard that is consistent with our neighboring states. We have many people who rely on fish to supplement their diets in this state, and it would be a grave injustice for them to not be able to rely on that. We also rely on um, fish Thanks. as a tourist attraction too. I appreciate you being with us this morning. Angie Rosser followed by Amy Manns. Angie Rosser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you and the committee members. And we really appreciate you and your staff making the extra effort to hold this public hearing virtually. Uh, I'm Angie Rosser, the executive director of the West Virginia Rivers Coalition, and we oppose this bill in part. Um, the first reason being it is incomplete. As stated uh, by prior speakers, the EPA has recommended 94 updates to human health criteria, but DEP has only proposed 24. Uh, DEP did not give scientific justification why EPA's methodology was appropriate for these 24 and not the, re the remaining 94. Uh, when it was explained, it became apparent that it was a political decision, that the reason we're, these 24 are proposed is because the West Virginia Manufacturers Association agrees with them. We're also opposed uh, to this bill as is, as a matter of policy. Our policy position is that we uh, we do not support weakening uh, water quality standards. And why we take this position is because we support reducing exposure to toxins. We want to see policy advance that reduces risk to public health, not, not increases exposure. As been stated, West Virginia has the third highest cancer death rate in the nation. This is another reason this legislature sh should be advancing policy to reduce our citizens' exposure to carcinogens, not increase them. 
Other considerations, well, industrial facilities are already in compliance with our current standards, so why should we be weakening them? And if we do weakening them, we're really shifting the burden onto our public water systems to treat for that the higher uh, levels of toxins and carcinogens in our water. That cost eventually for that treatment gets passed on to customers. So we are paying the price for the cost of relaxing standards that benefit polluting industries. So we urge the committee to amend this bill, to reject the weakening Ross. standards, and adopt all EPA recommendations. That Thank, strengthen you, Ms. Our Thank you, Ms. Rosser. Uh, Amy Manns, followed by Eve Markham Atkinson. Ms. Manns. Hello, my name is Amy Manns, and I'm a manager at the American Chemistry Council, where I manage the regulatory and technical affairs water team. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at this hearing regarding House Bill 2389. ACC is participating in the hearing in coordination with the West Virginia Manufacturers Association to support our efforts to move this legislation without amendment. I appreciate the efforts of the DEP and their work with the stakeholders, including the regulated community, to review the actual signs behind the human health criteria and arrive at a reasoned conclusion on these 24 standards. The standards should be adopted as DEP has proposed and efforts moving forward for cr future criteria development should be based on defensible science as well as to ensure the most accurate human health criteria data is being considered for the decision-making process for our affected industries, municipalities, and utilities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mance. Uh, Eve Markham Atkinson, followed by Autumn Crow. Ms. Markham Atkinson? Hi there, thank you for letting me speak today. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Hi, uh, I live in Huntington, West Virginia, and I'm here as a citizen of the state to have my opposition say on this bill. I live here. I drink this water. I want my water clean. Keeping our water quality standards at least as good as they have been should be a no-brainer. This bill would weaken standards on 13 chemicals and put more chemicals in our water. Some of that weakening is quite drastic. I I'm no scientist, okay? But I have the internet and Google, and I looked up just three of the chemicals on that list. I'm going to try to speak these. I'm not sure if I can get them right. Dichloroethylene or dichloroethane. The EPA has classified it as a group B, meaning probable human carcinogen. Aren't we like third in the nation for cancer rates and cancer deaths? Do we want more cancer? Are we shooting for number one? Endrin can literally kill you or at least wreck your central nervous system. That's not good. Tetrachloroethylene methylene chloride. That's a mouthful. This one can harm your eyes, skin, liver, and heart, and it may cause cancer and cause death. It can kill you. Look, it's your all's job to protect us, not harm us. Clean water should be a nonpartisan issue. It should be a simple choice. Do what West Virginians need. Protect our health protect our people. Do not pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Markham Atkinson. Autumn Crow, followed by Grace Deaver. Ms. Crow? Hi, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'm Autumn Crow. I'm uh, the treasurer of the Greenbrier River Watershed Association. The Greenbrier River is known for its excellent fishing and recreational opportunities, and I've fished those waters when I was a kid, and now my husband and I like to take our boys fishing in the Greenbrier and other rivers across the state. But we don't eat the fish we catch because West Virginia has a statewide fish consumption advisory. In a state blessed with beautiful rivers and plentiful fish, where we are encouraging tourists to come and enjoy our waters, shouldn't we try to make our waters cleaner and safer so that residents and tourists can safely eat the fish out of our rivers? HB 2389, the rule to update our water quality standards, is one step in the right direction for some chemicals, but it would weaken half of those proposed. Currently, our water quality standards are set below the Safe Drinking Water Act maximum contaminant level that water utilities are required to meet. But by passing this rule as written, you would actually raise the standards for pollutants such as tetrachloroethylene above that which is allowed in drinking water. This takes the, the responsibility away from industry discharging chemicals and places it on the public water utilities 
to filter out the pollutants to ensure that they are providing safe, clean water for their customers. Tetrachloroethylene is the pollutant that contaminated Payton City's water supply. The water utility had to spend millions of dollars to upgrade the water treatment plant so that they could provide safe water to their customers. In reviewing the discharge monitoring reports, most facilities that discharge these chemicals are already meeting the current standards. So why would we want to weaken them and put drinking water at risk? EPA and DP, DEP have made these recommendations, but EPA only mandates that state standards be equal to or better than the standards they set. Some states are making policy decisions not to weaken their standards because the industries are already meeting the current standards. Other states are making sure they don't put any larger burden on their drinking water Thank utilities. You. Thank you, Mr. Chosen Trump. to make the standards equal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Grace Deaver, followed by Anastasia Tab. Ms. Deaver. If you're talking, you're on mute. We will return to Ms. Deaver if she arrives. Anastasia Tab, followed by Mark Bryson. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Anastasia Tab from Jefferson County. As a West Virginia resident, homeowner, and a concerned parent, I ask you to reject HB 2389 to amend the water quality standards rule as proposed with these minimal changes that are less restrictive to the human health criteria. The latest scientific criteria was released by the EPA in 2015. Therefore, West Virginia is already delayed and failing in enforcing appropriate conditions. Before this policy is approved, it should be sent back to the WVDEP to correct the errors that they made in decreasing the protective measures. I can't fathom the recklessness of the DEP to suggest by their version of standards that the EPA has erred in its assessment of the harmful chemicals and the recommendation to limit the exposure by applying more protective measures on the quantities of these toxins in our water. I was baffled by the change of course that led us here uh, by the business and manufacturers who suggest the most unhealthy Americans in large part due to the toxins that they already contribute to our environment that we can handle more pollutants. It's already known that West Virginia is suffering in poor health and population decline. And the recent years have brought to light the continuous failures of the DEP to control the pollution and the harmful level of toxins in our water and the associated negative effects. Too many West Virginians are already without uncontaminated water and too many volunteer groups are trying to clean up and correct the years of neglect to the waterways. Why are we continuing to allow more exposure to these environmental stressors? This makes me rethink my family's investment in a wonderful life in West Virginia and if it's possible. If industrial facilities are already in compliance in the mitigation of certain pollutants, why would we reduce the standards? If you continue to approve less stringent regulations, West Thank Virginia you, will Tab. continue Thank to be at the bottom. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Mark Bryson followed by Maury Johnson. Mr. Bryson. Good morning, this is Alan Turner. I'm I'm uh, one of Mark Bryson's colleagues and I am speaking for him this morning. <clears throat> I am um, an attorney with Steptoe and Johnson. We represent a number of regulated entities um, in various industry sectors and we are um, joined this morning to support uh, House Bill 2389. <clears throat> we, uh, I'll make my my uh, comments brief. I think that Mr. Bryson submitted in writing some uh, additional comments, but we do support the uh, stakeholder process. Um, I would reiterate one of the comments already made that the DEP, um, in its role um, as a state water quality regulator, um, is encouraged to develop state water, not simply to um, take on. EPA recommended criteria and and um, encourage and support the DEP's efforts um, in every circumstance to evaluate EPA recommended criteria and how those would ap uh, apply in West Virginia. Um, in this case, um, they have done that through a stakeholder working group um, and we um, offer our support um, for, 
for House Bill Reed. Thank you very much, Ms. Turner. Maury Johnson, followed by Gary Zuckett. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Um, first off, I'm Maury Johnson from uh, Monroe County, West Virginia. Uh, we are proudly known to be some of the purest water in the world here, out of Peters Mountain. I want to say thank you for holding this hearing. I also want to say I totally and thoroughly support the comments made by Autumn Crow, uh, uh, Angie Rosser, and uh, Ms. Blakesman. Let's be serious here. We know that the, our current legislature seems to be controlled by those people who don't care about the clean water. Some of the people do, many people do. But recently we just were, we were awarded with a new national park. New, new River, New River, River's in the name, National Park. We're going to have thousands of people coming to see our water and fish our water and maybe hunt the animals that drink the water. And can you imagine them coming here and having a sign say, fish, but don't eat them. Hunt, but don't eat what you get. The water's too contaminated. You can't boat anymore. This is ludicrous. We need to be strengthening clean water rules, not weakening them. Kill this bill. Go back and be serious and protect the citizens of West Virginia and give us clean water. I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Johnson. Appreciate you being with us this morning. Gary Zuckett, followed by Leslie McCarty. Mr. Zuckett. Mr. Zuckett, if you are with us, you are muted. If you would check again. Okay, has Grace- There we go. Can oh. you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, let me get started then. Sorry about that. Um, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate uh, the time to uh, address the committee on this important issue. My name is Gary Zuckett. I serve as executive director of the West Virginia Citizen Action. Our organization and its members across the state are opposed to certain water quality changes in House Bill 2389 and ask that the members of the Judiciary Committee table this proposal and revise it to enact rules that lead to less pollution and cancer-causing chemicals in our waterways, many of which are used for public drinking water. Uh, House Bill 2389 actually increases the allowable discharge amounts for a baker's dozen of toxic chemicals into our rivers and streams to allow more than the current limits. Industries in our state are now working and profiting under the current rules and, apply, and uh, complying with them. So why would we let them dump more poisons into our water? This is a giant step backwards. This is just what the pollution lobby wants. According to the CDC, West Virginia already ranks number three in the nation per capita for cancer mortality. Will this bill help us to get to number one? This is one list that we'd rather be at the bottom of. How many delegates on this committee had constituents contact them pleading for more cancer-causing chemicals in their water? I dare say none. I'm asking each member of this committee to rewrite this proposal and work together to make our waterways cleaner and safer, not more polluted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Suckett. Uh, Leslie McCarty, followed by... Catherine Joswick. Ms. McCarty, are you with us this morning? If you are talking, uh, you might be muted. I'll give you another second. Has, has Grace Deaver joined us? I, I know that she was not with us earlier. Ms. Deaver, are you on? I want to give you another chance if you are. We'll move on and come back with Catherine Joswick. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. All right. First of all, I'd like to thank the Judiciary Committee for holding this hearing. It's especially important to find alternative ways to hear from West Virginia citizens during this time when citizen involvement at the Capitol is limited due to the pandemic. Unlike powerful corporations, ordinary people in West Virginia do not have paid lobbyists with access to 
the uh, legislature, and we must rely on forums like this to express our concerns. So thank you very much. We have heard much discussion over the past few years, and indeed during this legislative session, concerning the urgent need to attract individuals to West Virginia to stem our population decline. It is unfathomable how HB 2389 would encourage individuals to move here. In fact, it would have the opposite effect and speed up the exodus out of West Virginia. The access to safe, clean drinking water is a basic right that we too often take for granted. But the crises all over the country, including Flint, Michigan, and many here in West Virginia, think Parkersburg, Minden, Charleston, and the Freedom Industries spill, make it clear just how important it is. In 2019, the DEP recommended adopting 56 of the uh, revised criteria before interference by the West Virginia Manufacturing Association and corporate interests. This influence has led directly to this current proposal that includes updates to 24 criteria, with 13 of these being weakening of the current standards. We should not decrease any of the current practices, protections. As previous speakers have mentioned, reducing protections not only risks the health of West Virginians, it leads to an increase of levels exceeding those in drinking water. This means that local utilities and ultimately us citizens are paying thousands if not millions to remediate that water to remove the toxic chemicals and provide safe drinking water. While I support thoughtful consideration of proposed EPA guidelines and regulations, I have no faith that the overburdened and underfunded West Virginia Thank DEP you, has the resources. I appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank okay, you. I urge you to reject this. Thank you very much. Uh, Hannah Spencer, followed by David Yossi. Ms. Spencer? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hannah Spencer. I am here today to speak about the experiences of Payton City, a small town along the banks of the Ohio River. Last January, the local newspaper reported the city's water supply contained tetrachloroethylene, or PCE, a chemical commonly found in dry cleaners and metal degreasing solutions. In the same breath as telling residents their water supply was contaminated, they also stated there was no immediate risk and the water was safe to drink. PCE is known to cause short-term effects like skin irritation, respiratory issues, and trouble swallowing. It is a central nervous system depressant. Long-term exposure of PCE leads to kidney issues and many variations of neurological disorders. A small group of women formed a community-led health survey and started calling around to their neighbors asking if they would be comfortable sharing what illnesses are found in their households. Payton City is a town of about 2,300 residents. Of the 225 households who responded, 75 showed kidney issues, 59 showed neurological disorders, 17 had either brain cancer or brain tumors, 12 had MS, 5 had leukemia, and there are five cases of ALS. Of the 46 households surveyed on the street where the water utility is located, residents reported 14 people with kidney issues, five with brain cancer, four with MS, three with leukemia, and one case of ALS. 41 people on the street reported skin issues and 43 reported breathing issues. 16 people reported muscle spasms or tremors. Now I learn the West Virginia legislature wants to pass House Bill 2389, which will increase the permissible limit of PCE from 0.8 micrograms per liter to 10, double the limit set by the EPA. Increasing the allowable limit that industries can discharge is going to exacerbate the problems our small town public service districts face. Instead of holding industries accountable for keeping toxic chemicals out of our waterways, we are placing the responsibility of cleanup on the backs of the water utility workers. Even worse, the responsibility for cleanup is falling on the citizens who acquire donated bottled water and distrib distribute it to, to, to their neighbors make calls to the EPA to try to find solutions for this contamination you, and shout from the rooftops hoping someone will take their concerns about a health crisis and their community seriously. It shouldn't Thank be their responsibility. I oppose House Bill 2389 and believe the water quality standards should be more stringent, not more lax. Thank you very no much. No West Virginia should have to worry about their family's health as they drink their tap water. Mr. Thank you. Yossi, David Yossi, followed by Bill Gillette. My name is Dave Yousey, and I'm offering these comments on behalf of the Gas and Oil Association of West Virginia. We support House Bill 2389 as a first step in the adoption of meaningful criteria. The water quality standards proposed for approval by the DEP are supported by the independent analysis performed by the WVMA. That analysis was comprehensive assumptions that make the criteria extraordinarily safe. Committee members may not understand from the statements made by opponents of this rule that many of the changes proposed by the DEP will result in lower, more stringent criteria. 
We support even these reductions because we believe in developing the proper analytical process and following it where the science leads. Opponents of the changes need to show their work and demonstrate why the criteria would not be safe, and they haven't done that. We urge committee members to support the DEP proposal and to approve changes to the state water quality standards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Yelsey. Bill Gillette, followed by Karen Ireland. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you very much. Uh, this is, I think this, uh, this type of forum is especially important during this time of the pandemic as we have uh, less chance to uh, have an impact as citizens uh, to the issues that are at hand in our state. Uh, I moved to West Virginia uh, over 20 years ago and lived in Western Virginia uh, as I grew up. Um, environment is a very important aspect of where I choose to live, and I have heard from not only people on this call, but also from my neighbors and friends about how um, issues like this are seriously affecting their decisions on whether to stay in West Virginia, let alone to move here. So uh, given these considerations, and, and I am a scientist, and I do understand that um, the science of water protection is uh, tricky, tricky, difficult, and um, sometimes um, fraught with confusion and contention. And so I wonder, though, um, given the status of the United States and most states uh, actually trying to improve their water standards for the health of their citizens, why we would consider lowering that. Now, I understand that maybe in one, one case or another, it might actually be uh, okay if the science supports it. And we just heard that perhaps some science, science does support this. But nevertheless, we, we live in a fishbowl, essentially, and eventually more will be dumped into our ecosystem. And it just boggles my mind that we would consider lowering our standards, especially, as many people have pointed out, as the standard, the industry is, um, uh, we are able to uh, keep to the current standards. As we put more pressure on the environment, we're putting more pressure on local and less powerful and less well-funded uh, governments and agencies and utilities. So I urge you to reject House Bill 2389 for the good of our current citizens and also for our future citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gillette. Uh, Karen Ireland, followed by Rebecca McPhail. Ms. Ireland. Karen Ireland, if you're muted, we can't hear you. We will try again. Rebecca McPhail, followed by Paul Brewer, Bowers, or Brewer, excuse me. Ms. McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Rebecca McPhail, and I'm with the West Virginia Manufacturers Association. I'm here today to express the support of the WVMA and its members for House Bill 2389. We applaud the ongoing efforts of the WVDEP as they facilitate a stakeholder work group to develop a process for establishing scientifically defensible human health criteria for our state. The WVMA conducted an extensive review of US EPA recommendations when preparing comments as allowed by the 2019 West Virginia Legislature. This review created several questions related to the methodology and the age of the studies which were used by the US EPA in establishing their recommendations, which are just that, recommendations. States are, states are encouraged by the EPA to develop their own criteria and the stakeholder work group continues to make progress on doing what makes the most sense in protecting the health of West Virginians. I wanna emphasize that the WVMA um, advocates criteria development based on science regardless of, the, of whether that means the criteria are higher or lower. In its review, the WVMA recommended 21 criteria that were more stringent or lower than current West Virginia criteria. At the same time, opponents only advocate changes that would make the criteria more stringent, ignoring science where it justifies higher criteria, a departure from their position back in 2019. House Bill 2389 is a solid step forward for West Virginia, and the work group it establishes can help assure that the future criteria are right for our state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. McPhail. Paul Brewer, followed by Sally Roberts-Wilson. Mr. Brewer, are you muted? Okay. 
Sally Roberts Wilson, followed by, excuse me, followed by Katie Pratt. Hello, um, my name is Sally Roberts Wilson and I'm chair of Rise Up West Virginia. And I'm here today to oppose HB 2389. Um, it, despite all of the scientific uh, controversy that's been uh, talked about today, I think one of the things we uh, know for sure is that uh, the pollution of our water causes people to leave this state. Rise Up West Virginia was formed largely as a result of the Freedom Industries pollution uh, leak uh, in Charleston, West Virginia. Charleston has never recovered to this day. Families left, businesses were closed, uh, real estate prices for those families that left never uh, came back to the level they were before they left. Some of that real estate is still on the market. Um, the health of West Virginians is a moral issue. I agree with the prior uh, uh, person who said that support that they supported the stakeholder process. I hope that our representatives here today will support the stakeholders of West Virginia, which are the citizens of the state that live here, many of whom do not even have a public water system, many of whom uh, rely on wells. We know what a pollution leak can do to a community. We know what happens when this occurs. We don't need to go back to those days. We applaud the, the legislature for enacting more stringent rules, and we hope that you will continue to enforce them. Please very do much. not include, uh, please vote against HB 2389. Thank you very much. I think I saw, uh, pardon me, one, one moment. Uh, did somebody have a comment? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I unmuted. Uh, I'm Paul Brewer. I unmuted my. Uh, well, I will, uh, Mr. Brewer. I'll put you back in the queue. Okay, I've Thank got. You, sir. I've got Katie Thanks. Pratt, followed by Karen Ireland. I believe came in as well. So I've got Katie Pratt, followed by Karen Ireland, followed by Paul Brewer. Thank you, sir. Katie Pratt, Miss Pratt, are you with us? Okay, we'll go to um, Karen Ireland. Karen Ireland, I think I just saw you come in. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I really want to say thank you for, for granting this public hearing. It's, it's really important um, that people be able to participate in the legislative process. And um, as you know, I'm down there a lot, so I appreciate this. Um, I just wanted to weigh in and talk about um, the fact that I would like to see stronger water protections rather than weakening those 13 protections that we're talking about here. Um, these are chemicals that are the most harmful to human health. And I just think that we've worked so hard and come so far um, to, to get these rules right. And the way to do that is when industry can already meet these more stringent levels, then we should, you know, hold them to that, keep going that way, ensure that we have safe, clean drinking water. Um, and that's what's going to bring people in, I think, is, is when we have sustainable industry, but also a healthy environment. And um, I think that if we spent as much time working on lowering our rate as the third highest, uh, the state with the third highest cancer rates, you know, and making that better, than just the same way that we do in trying to get industry here and businesses here, I think that's when we will see real success as a state. And so um, I appreciate it. I had to have a plumber here this morning, so this means a lot that, that uh, I was able to weigh in. Thanks so much.
Nobody can hear me. Now is my fault this time. I'm sorry. Thank you, Miss Ireland. We're thinking about you. I appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. Uh, Paul Brewer, followed by Linda Frame. Excuse me. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for the opportunity to speak in public hearing. I know it's a difficult time and it's very challenging, and we appreciate the uh, input. I've been in the industry, whitewater rafting industry, for over 50 years. Um, in, in, as a guide and as a whitewater rafting uh, company owner, I know what clean water means to this state. It's brought in, in one year, it's its peak, over 250,000 tourists. That's a lot of jobs. That's a lot of money to this state. But in 2014, that fell apart because of chemical spills. And tourists don't know where these chemicals are. They just think it's dirty out here and they don't come to visit the state. We lose jobs, we lose money. That's not what we want to be. We oppose this HR 2398 because of we need clean water. A lot of people have already stated that, but we need jobs as well. And tourism is growing. This beautiful state can handle a lot more tourists if they know the water is clean. And I invite you to come whitewater rafting. We have a new national park on the New River and uh, beautiful Gully River as a whitewater cowboy. Please come on down this summer and enjoy the beautiful, beautiful area. Again, we need clean water for tourism, for jobs, and for our health and our families. I appreciate the opportunity, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brewer. Appreciate you being here. Linda Frame, followed by Paul Calamita. Ms. Frame. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? loud and clear. Great, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Chairman Capito and members of the House Judiciary Committee. I'm Linda Frame, and I'm president of the West Virginia Environmental Council. I am also a resident of Charleston, where I have lived and worked for over 25 years, and where I have raised my family, and where I drink the water. We lobby for members across the state who want clean air to breathe and clean water to drink. It's as simple as that. And at our annual member survey, protecting our water was our member's number one legislative priority. That is why I am urging you to vote no on HB 2389. We call on you to make the health of the public, your constituents, a priority. Allowing more dangerous toxins into our drinking water is not protecting our public health. West Virginia is just a handful of states one of a handful of states that is losing population. Why is this happening? Perhaps people don't wanna choose between the benefits of having industries and living with the pollution they create. Perhaps they wanna live somewhere with jobs and a clean environment, including safe water to drink. Asking people to move to or to remain in a state with the third highest cancer death rate while considering legis legislation that could move us up to number one or number two does not exactly rule out the welcome mat for people looking for a place to raise a family or to retire. It's time for us to halt our race to the bottom, and it's time to protect our citizens and our drinking water, and it's beyond time to put the health of West Virginians above the profits of these polluting industries. For these reasons, we urge you to put your drinking water constituents first and reject HB 2389. Thank you so much to the committee and to its staff for coordinating this event and for granting us our public hearing request. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Ms. Frame. Uh, Paul Calamita, followed by John David. Mr. Chairman, I'm Paul Calamita, uh, here on general counsel to the West Virginia Municipal Water Quality Association, uh, which comprises municipal water and sewer utilities statewide. We provide public drinking water statewide, so we care about getting these standards right. We support the proposal and want to provide some perspective. We're not political. We'll comply with whatever the state decides. However, we comply by raising water and sewer bills on you and your neighbors, including those on low and fixed incomes. Accordingly, we strive to make sure that the regulatory requirements are necessary and appropriate. The vast majority of states have not adopted and continue not to adopt the 94 updated EPA criteria. That includes surrounding states like Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. There are many more. There are, there are good reasons that these, that these EPA updates are the most 
state rejected EPA standards updates I've seen in 30 years in the water quality business. We're concerned that the science behind these updates is speculative as best. There are multiple margins of safety, including one uncertainty factor that ranges from 1,000 to 10,000 times. Such uncertainty factors refute that the criteria are based on good science. It just can't be good science if we are that incredibly uncertain. Um, that said, we are willing to support EPA's proposal as to the, excuse me, DP's proposal as to the 24 criteria, which are the subject of today's hearing. We think DP did a solid review of the factors. I won't say science underlying these criteria. We wish the criteria updates were not political. They shouldn't be. In most cases, the increases and decreases will have no regulatory effect for two reasons. One, consider Endrin, which a well-intentioned speaker noted earlier. While the human health number is going up from 2.3 to 30, the aquatic life number stays at 2.3. Thank because you, Mr. Calameda. I appreciate that. Thank you for considering our support, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for being here. John David, followed by Maya Mir Thomas. Yes, please, John David here. I'm uh, a uh, with the Public uh, Service District, Paige Kincaid, uh, founder and the retired 40-year member. I just want to say that a couple years ago, the governor stated on Fox that if you if you uh, want uh, uh, pristine water, if you want pristine air, come to West Virginia. But in the meantime, companies have taken advantage to uh, pollute the water. Uh, to kill people and basically um, we should have a policy that if you uh, understand that water is public property no dumping should be allowed we are concerned about the new river um, because west virginia american water uses the new river uh, uh, as a water source and according to virginia tech the new river is highly polluted and west virginia american water does not have a backup source uh, there are PFASs coming from chemical plants in Virginia. There are uh, agricultural pesticides from the Carolinas. There are chemical uh, plants. There's black fly spraying. There's railroad uh, spraying. There's the dump at Canard. There is the Minden situation with PCBs. That's a super fun site. Uh, there's iron, of course, that's dumped in the water supply. Uh, and you can't eat the thing. Um, so basically, we're concerned that, you know, Right now, 36 counties uh, are ranked among the worst uh, in the nation um, in, in a study for um, the safe uh, drinking water violations. And in essence, we're experiencing a license to kill. Um, we support the uh, uh, EPA uh, standards. We know that the previous administration weakened the standards. We, 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 we want to comply with the standards. And, uh, and we think that uh, this bill uh, is not a good bill. We want pure, pristine water, and we want people to come here because of that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David. Appreciate it. But Maya, Maya Meyer Thomas is next, followed by Reverend Brad Davis. Ms. Meyer Thomas? Hi, yes, thank you. First of all, thanks for um, offering this platform for us. This is extraordinarily important to have our voices heard. Um, as a young wildlife a professional in the wildlife and water quality industry, I can assure you that this bill will have a direct negative impact on the citizens of West Virginia. It is offensive to the constituents that voted our elected officials in that yet another bill weakening our water quality standards is even on the table. Any elected official, lobbyist, or funder of this bill should ask themselves if they are willing to drink the water that has national recognition for toxins coming from our tap as one of the country's worst um, states for drinking water. That is the message that you are sending to the nation about how you care for the constituents here and for the tourists that visit the state. That's very embarrassing. Um, you ask why people are leaving the beautiful state and what can be done to bring people to West Virginia and encourage economic flourishment? The answer is quite simple. Care about the health of your constituents, tourists, and the environment they live in. There's a direct correlation between community health, economics, ecotourism, real estate versus environmental health. It has been proven over and over again. People are leaving the state because they want um, a healthy home to raise families and clean green jobs. 
This is not a partisan issue. This is a human issue. I will remind you that the EPA and CWA was created in the 1960s and 70s after horrific environmental concerns with toxic water and food deserts after Republican elected official listened to the concerns of his constituents and proposed a bill to protect their environment, the health and the environment. That's how the EPA became what it is today. Um, we need to strengthen uh, water quality standards to protect um, our constituents, the constituents that voted you in. If you really care about the welfare and successful longevity of the state, reject HB 23 and adopt the EPA 94 regulations or stronger. This is not speculative test science. This is real science. Please listen. Please care about the health of the people that voted you in. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Reverend Brad Davis, uh, followed by Katie Pratt. We'll try Miss Pratt again, followed by Betty Rivard. Reverend? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and to the other members of the committee for giving me the opportunity to speak to this issue today. I am Reverend Brad Davis, a United Methodist clergy person and member of the Government Concerns Unit of the West Virginia Council of Churches. I currently serve in and am a native of the southern coal fields of this great state. The southern coal fields where in many communities boil water advisories and water polluted with heavy metals and contaminated with other bacteria is not the exception, but the rule. Where it is not uncommon to see folks get sick and die with kidney and liver disease, cancer, and a whole host of other health issues related to contaminants in the drinking water, such as arsenic and lead. As a person of faith, I believe, and our United Methodist Social Principles affirm, that all creation is the Lord's and we, humanity, are responsible for the ways in which we use and abuse it. God has granted us stewardship of creation. We should meet these stewardship duties through, through acts of loving care and respect. Uh, this is our role and responsibility to this home that God has given us as a gift. When we deal with the earth and its resources, and we, when we, we are dealing with our fellow human beings and all other living things, and we are dealing with God, and we are dealing with the essence of life. Uh, doing harm to life should not be a policy option. Uh, water is a life-giving give, element. Indeed, it is the source of life. Without clean, potable water, there is no life. To choose not to protect our water is to choose to leave life unprotected. Therefore, I urge you to embrace your role as caretakers of the lives and livelihoods of the people and support policies that will strengthen, not weaken, the water quality of our great state, Thank ensuring you, that life will flourish and not be diminished. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, has Katie Pratt joined us? Katie Pratt. Then we'll go to Betty Rivard, followed by Jean Evans Moore. Ms. Rivard? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I wasn't able to connect the video, so I will, uh, and I drafted a statement thinking that I would not be able to get in, but I would like to read the statement. And I want to thank you very much and thank the committee members for conducting this public hearing. Uh, I just want to make one major point. Next to our people, the most critical resource we have in our state is our water. I cannot understand how we can even consider further degrading the quality of our water by passing this bill. We are in the midst of upgrading our tourism and economic development to highlight their critical importance to the future of our state. We need to understand that most people and businesses we want to attract, as well as those we are inviting in, care greatly about the quality of our water. There are already scenarios projected where global warming could cause internal migration from people along the coasts who are affected by rising seas and people in the West who are affected by droughts and other disasters. 
please oppose this bill and do everything possible to protect the quality of our water. Thank you again for uh, for hosting this public hearing. Thank you, Ms. Rivard. Uh, Jean Evansmore, followed by Samuel Hickman. Good morning, everyone. I suppose I should turn my camera on also. Should I? Okay. I'm Jean Evansmore, and I uh, I live in Fayette County. I was born and raised here in West Virginia, and I came back a few years ago. I turned 80 last year, and it surprises most people because I don't look like the stereotypical 80-year-old West Virginia female. Well, I lived most of my life elsewhere. I came back home in 94. I am totally aghast that anything to make water worse is being proposed. Water is a basic. Without water, we don't have life. I'm not speaking for any particular group. I just heard about this and I'm speaking for myself and just regular people. I am not connected to a group, but I will definitely support and I definitely support the ideas. I'm not a scientist. I'm an 80 year old woman who's very much involved with what's going on here in West Virginia because I don't want to leave. I've been trying my damnedest to stay here. And I keep getting the feeling that people don't give a kitty. You're concerned about jobs. Well, who the heck wants to come here? Once they get beyond the beauty and learn the reality, I think this does not make sense. The young lady, Eve, spoke about it earlier. She lives in Huntington. This is crazy. This is crazy. Jefferson County is catching it. I have relatives here. Why would you make something worse than it is? Gary also suggests that you table this and revise it. Thank that you, makes Seth. sense. We appreciate You're quite you being welcome. Present. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Sam Hickman, followed by Jeff Fritz. Mr. Hickman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for setting a good example. And uh, thank you for helping the team work out the kinks. My name is Samuel Hickman. I'm the executive director of the West Virginia chapter of the National Association of Social Workers. And on behalf of social workers, I ask that you reject House Bill 2389, authorizing DEP to promulgate legislative rules related to water quality standards. I think in pursuing this diminishing of the regulations, the corporate and manufacturing interests are showing very little regard for the future or vision for the future of West Virginia. Yes, West Virginia's water is precious and clean water should be the right of all her people. But it also makes perfect economic sense to protect our freshwater sources. In short, clean water, water is going to be profitable increasingly in the future. As of December 7th, you know, investors can now trade in water futures just as they can trade in oil, gas, and gold futures. Water shortages may be caused by many things, but water scarcity is driven by growing freshwater use and depletion of usable freshwater resources. In short, the world is going to be coming to us for fresh water. If economic concerns are what drive you, just look at the potential that exists in West Virginia's clean water sources. Keeping our water clean and pure will multiply that potential many times over. Again, I ask you to reject House Bill 2389 and to invest in West Virginia's future as a clean water supplier, meeting the ever-increasing needs of people across the country and around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. Jeff Fritz, followed by Jeff Allen. Mr. Fritz, whenever you're ready. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Jeff Fritz, and I represent the Comores Company, which operates manufacturing sites in Washington, West Virginia, and Bell, West Virginia. The Comores Company routinely not only complies with DEP regulations, but generally exceeds them in emissions from our facility. As such, we work closely with the Department of Environmental Protection, and I'm a little bit troubled today by 
um, sort of the, the, the assault and criticism on the Department of Environmental Protection. The DEP and its staff are to really be commended for the way that they have worked with the regulated community to review the actual science behind the human health criteria standards and specifically those relevant to the waters of West Virginia. This is a proper approach for a regulatory body to take. It is consistent with the direction that was provided by the US EPA when the human health criteria standards were issued. And importantly, it adheres to the guidance that the legislature provided to DEP just two years ago. DEP has thus arrived at a reasoned science-based conclusion for these 24 standards, and we suggest that the standards should be adopted as the department has proposed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fritz. Jeff Allen, followed by John Wells. Mr. Allen. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jeff Allen. I'm a United Methodist pastor and the executive director of the West Virginia Council of Churches. The council has long-standing statements regarding water quality, including, we encourage the legislature and the Department of Environmental Protection to strengthen rules that safeguard water quality and quantity. We encourage the state and its agencies to adopt and enforce the Federal Clean Water Act standards. We support the highest level of protection possible for our finest streams. Biblically, our streams and rivers are gifts from God, and belong to all of us as a common good. As James Bailey has pointed out, this gift is not just given to one generation, but to all the generations to come. When you lend something, a book, a tool, or whatever, most of us have wondered, am I going to get that back in good shape? Uh, or am I going to get that back at all? It's the same with our water. If we are lending our rivers and streams, the expectation would be to have the water return in as good a shape or better, as the scouts would say. On this basis, House Bill 2389 gives us great cause for, for concern. Thank you very much for holding this hearing and thank you very much for holding it at nine o'clock instead of eight o'clock. Mr. John Wells, John Wells. Mr. Wells, if you're speaking, you are on mute. Okay, it doesn't appear that uh, Mr. Wells is with us. Let me uh, take this opportunity. That's all the uh, participants that I have on my list. Let me take this opportunity since we're doing this virtually for the first time. If there's anybody that um, that received the link that did not have an opportunity to, to uh, speak for their two minutes, if they're on, you may unmute yourself uh, and and um, and give your give your thoughts. Now, if you already spoke and want two more minutes, uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to honor that. But if there are folks that have made the time to to be here this morning and didn't have a chance to speak, I'd I'd like to allow them to do so. Okay. Well, we appreciate everybody taking the time this morning to be with us. A couple housekeeping matters, if you have written materials that you would like to submit to the committee. Uh, please send those to our clerk, Mark White. He will ensure that those get, get to uh, all the committee members before consideration of this House bill. His email is listed on our on the West Virginia Legislative website. If you go to the House Committee on the Judiciary's sublink through that site, it'll have the information to submit your materials to him. And again, he'll ensure that those get to all the members before we consider the legislation before us. Uh, tentatively speaking, uh, this committee will take up uh, the rule as discussed today, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, that is the plan at this point, and we will uh, advise if that changes. Again, we appreciate everybody's time and your patience working with us in our technological uh, uh, beginnings here. Uh, we hope that this becomes a, a norm for this uh, session, but not a norm long term. And uh, with that, I will call uh, an adjournment to this meeting and look forward to seeing everybody in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.